Hey guys, welcome back to Cougar Chem Tutoring. I'm Austin. I'll be running through part two of problem set 11, Lewis structures. All right, so number four, how many lone pair electrons are in 630 milligrams of phosphorus pentafluoride? Okay, so <clears throat> what we have to do here is, so this is this is covalent naming here, and I, I'm not sure if we've covered that quite yet, but covalent naming uses a lot of prefixes, so like penta. So all you have to know is that this is going to be P, F, and then the penta is a five, so like pentagon, right? So PF5. So that's the chemical formula of this thing. Now they want to know, based on the Lewis structure of this guy, how many lone pair electrons would there would be if there were 630 milligrams of this stuff. So um, as you can tell, we're probably going to have to use molar masses and turn this stuff into moles and stuff, right? So um, what we first need to do then is figure out um, what the Lewis structure looks like. So I'm going to draw my skeleton. Now PF5, Dry, if, if we're following the rules here, I've, I've written the rules down here. So in determining the center atom, remember, it's going to be the, the atom that makes the most bonds without expanding its octet. And then if they can't do that, then it's going to be the atom that makes the most bonds by expanding its octet. So um, I'm going to assume that it's phosphorus because phosphorus without expanding its octet has got three spots, right? But it can expand its octet because it's past the third period. And we covered why that happens in the previous video. So if you have questions about that, I'd refer to that. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw phosphorus in the middle, and then I'm going to draw my skeleton. So there's five of these guys. So I'm going to draw my skeleton. Whoops. Um, let me draw the spaces a little apart. So um, here's my skeleton. And then remember, give everybody an octet. So that, that's the second rule. Give everybody an octet. So I'm going to say 246, 246, right? Because they already each have those that bond right there. 246, 246, 246. Okay. So then I'm going to just say, okay, how many valence electrons actually came for PF5? So there's five coming for phosphorus, right? Because it's in the fifth group on the periodic table. And then seven, because fluorine is in the seventh group, it's seven of them, but or seven of, for each fluorine, but there's five of them, right? So it's going to be five plus seven times five, which is 40, right? Because this is 35, 35 plus five is 40. So 40 valence electrons. Now, um, all I have to do is compare this, this Lewis structure to the 40 valence electrons. So each of these is eight, right? So the, the bonding electrons is two, and then four, six, eight. And so I'm going to say two, uh, here's one, two, three, four, five sets of eight. So that's 40, right? Eight times five is 40. So that is, this is the correct Lewis structure. So I'm just going to underline it to make sure that we know that that's, that's what, it, that, that this is the correct one. Now they want to know how many lone pair electrons would there be if there were 630 milligrams of this stuff. So I'm going to turn this into grams by moving the decimal over three places. Okay. If that's confusing, just know that what I did is I'm divided by a thousand milligrams because I know there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. Okay. So I'm going to start my uh, dimensional analysis with my measured value. If you remember um, how we do dimensional analysis, we always start with the measured value and then we have like conversions that we need to know, right? So one of the conversions I need to know is that one PF5 molecule has how many, how many valence or how many lone pair electrons? It's got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 30 valent, 30 lone pair electrons. I'm going to put LPE. Okay. 30 lone pair electrons. So this is one of the conversions I need to know. Um, the other conversion would actually be a molar mass, which um, uh, hopefully you know how to do that. All you have to do is add up one, uh, the, the, the molar mass of phosphorus plus five times the molar mass of fluorine. And I'm not going to do that here because we've done that in a previous video. So I'm just going to put 0.63 grams. Um, I guess I should put zero grams, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn this into moles of PF5. And, and the way I do that is just using the molar mass. If you did it correctly, you should get about 125.9 six four grams per one mole of pf5 that way your grams cancel and if you stopped here you'd get moles of pf5 so now um i have moles of pf5 but i needed to get it into um molecules of pf5 because i know if i can get it to molecules of pf5 i could turn it into lone pair electrons so i'm gonna i'm gonna erase this just to give myself some space here so um i'm gonna i'll i'll, I'll redraw this structure here in a bit so um, i know that one mole of pf5 has 6.022 times 10 to the 23 PF5 molecules, okay, molecules. And if I were to stop here, so I, I can cancel my one mole here, if I were to stop here, I'd get number of molecules of PF5 in 0.63 grams of phosphorus pentafluoride. However, they're asking for lone pairs, and I know that one molecule of PF5 has 30 lone pair electrons, 30 lone pair, and I'll put E minus, okay? And that's the unit I wanted to end up with on the top, right? That's the one I wanted to end up with. So um, now all it, all it is here is using a calculator to multiply everything on the top and divide it by everything on the bottom. If you do that correctly, you should get somewhere around 9.03 times 10 to the 22, okay? And that would be lone pair electrons. 
Okay, so uh, mixing a little bit of Lewis structures with dimensional analysis, that's just kind of kind of how they're going to test you as well because the, it's easier for, for them to test you like this because they can test you like it for two concepts in, in one problem instead of having to separate them, okay? All right, so um, on to number five. Okay, um, chlorofluorocarbons are, com are compounds linked to depletion of stratospheric ozone. They are a greenhouse gas, and dr so draw Lewis structures of the following um, carbons or compounds. So um, remember, determine the center atom. And remember, we're always going to assume carbons can be the center atom because it can make the most bonds without expanding its octet first. So carbon in the middle, and then I just got these halogens on the outside, so I'm going to put them out here. Uh, there's one, oops, one fluorine, uh, and then three chlorines. Now, you might be like, well, I, can't chlorine expand its octet? Well, remember, first we're going with the, the atom that can make the most bonds without expanding its octet because it actually costs energy to expand your octet because those d orbitals are in higher energy levels. So um, we're not going to assume chlorine is going to be the center atom until we have to, uh, to accommodate all the bonds in a particular atom. So carbon is there, and then I give everybody an octet, right? So here's their... Uh, lone pairs out here and carbon already has it, it already has its eight here with the with the bonding electrons and then i'm just going to count the valence electrons so the valence electrons here is four plus and then each of these is seven so i'm going to put seven times four which is 32 valence electrons um, and if you notice there's one two three four sets of eight which ends up being 32 so that's that's my my lewis structure for this guy and they didn't ask for any other information so you're just going to end up with that structure now i've only done two of these because i believe by doing these two you'd actually be able to answer the other three that were assigned to you as well so now here in this structure they're kind of telling you hey there are two center atoms here these carbons are binding to one another so what you're going to do is draw the carbon here a, a carbon here and then these correspond to this carbon and these correspond to this carbon so i'm going to draw three bonds uh, three other bonds on each carbon and say so here's chlorine here's chlorine and then here's fluorine and then here's fluorine and fluorine oops and then another chlorine okay and now give everybody an octet boom 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 um and then uh this one's going to be a little bit harder to count not harder but it's just going to be a lot more to count i should say so there's four here plus four from each carbon and then i'm just going to put seven times three whoops times three plus that okay so because there's um one two three halogens and then another set of three halogens so seven times three so that's gonna be 21 42 this is actually gonna be 50 valence electrons okay so um, I'm just going to count the, the valence electrons in this structure and see if it matches that. So I got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 46, 48, 50. Hold on. Yeah, 50. Sorry, I... I <laughs> Hope you're able to keep up with that. But I'm not gonna. I'm. Uh, this one is the correct Lewis structure. I'll just let you know. Um, this is gonna be the correct one. You'll see that there's actually 50 here. I think I double counted one of them. Um, but um, that's how you'll you'll um, do molecules that have two center atoms is just bind them together, especially when they're carbons. So this is gonna be the final answer. All right, number six, formic acid. Um, is the smallest organ organic acid and is originally was originally isolated by distilling red ants. Um, draw its Lewis structure given the connectivity of the atoms to shown to the right. Okay, generally in chemistry, when you see a red, that's going to be an oxygen. When you see a black, that's going to be a carbon, and when you see a white, that's going to be a hydrogen. That's for some reason a universal thing that we that chemists like to do. That when they designate those elements, those are usually the colors that they assign to them. So. Um, I think it's because oxygen obviously turns our blood red, um, and then carbon is like graphite, right? Um, so it's it's black, and then hydrogen for some reason they chose white. I don't know, um, but it's it's nice that they've given us this structure because now we can say okay, carbon's in the middle, it's connecting to oxygen here and hydrogen here, and then another oxygen here and a, which is connected to a hydrogen there. So then I'm just going to give everybody their octet, right? And then see if it matches the the valence electron count. So I've got one from this hydrogen four from this carbon and then six six plus one okay so now that's a total of 18 valence electrons so i'm going to count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen yep that is the correct lewis structure now um when we get into formal charge you'll actually learn that the that this lone pair on oxygen comes down to make a double bond with carbon to minimize a formal charge which we'll get to why that happens in the next problem set um all right so that would be the the final answer for uh, formic acid
Okay, number seven, labels on household cleaners caution against mixing bleach with ammonia because they react to produce monochloramine and hydrazine, both of which are toxic. Okay, you draw the lowest structures for each of these structures. So I got this guy. Now, which one would be the center atom here? Without expanding its octet, remember nitrogen has three open spots. It's got one, two, three open spots that it can make a bond. So I'm going to assume nitrogen is going to be the center atom, not chlorine, even though it can expand its octet because we want to use the one that, can, that doesn't have to first. So I'm going to put nitrogen in the middle, connect it to two hydrogens, and then a chlorine and then give everybody an octet that's not a hydrogen, right? And then just count the valence electrons. I got five plus two plus seven, and that's a total of 14 valence electrons. So 14 valence electrons for this guy. I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Yep, that's correct. So this is the Lewis structure for the N2, N8, the monochloramine, okay? All right, now we've got two center atoms. We know that because um, they're the when they... When we have a structure like this and it's kind of written like this, we have two nitrogens, you're going to just connect them to one another, especially when there's hydrogen. There's only hydrogens left. So I'm going to put like this. And you may wonder why I do that. Um, when they when we have two center atoms, you want to spread out the bonding as much as possible. Um, and so we, we would put two hydrogens on each of these. And you'll actually see that this actually ends up working out. So when I give um, nitrogens their octets, this actually ends up being the Lewis structure. Um, so we, we can double check just in case this. We've got uh, 10 coming from the, the nitrogens and then four. So it's 14 valence electrons again. And I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Yep, that's correct. You'll notice a lot that a nitrogen will end up usually having a lone pair on it because if it doesn't, it actually takes on a positive one charge, which we'll get to here once we do formal charges. All right, so uh, last one, number eight, draw a Lewis structure, Lewis structure for phosgene, COCl2, a poisonous gas, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so COCl2, I'm going to assume carbon is going to be the center atom. So I'm going to put carbon, oxygen, a chlorine, and a chlorine, and then give everybody their octets. And then count the valence electrons. So I got carbon has got four plus six from from oxygen plus seven times two. Okay, so that's 14. That's gonna be 20, 24 valence electrons. 24 valence electrons. So I got two, four. So oh, sorry, I didn't give carbon its its lone pair here in the in the Lewis structure. Um, so now I got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So I'm two over. So I need a net loss of two. And remember how we do that? We cancel out. One of these, and actually you'll learn that it's it's going to be with one of the lone pairs on oxygen and not on chlorine because of formal charge. So I'm going to erase both of these and then create a bond out of it. And then that would be your final Lewis structure, okay? Um, so again, I've been mentioning formal charge a lot. Um, we'll get to that actually in the next video in part uh, part one of the of problem set 12, and it'll actually show you give us the final touches on our Lewis structures to show us how they really should be. Um, and it has to do with... Um, how how many protons there are in a nucleus and how many electrons need to belong to that um, element in order to give it a zero formal charge. Um, all right, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you in the next video.